Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everyone, I hope you're ready to dive deep into the sea of peptides and science as today we're going to discuss PNC27. This was a video for good reason requested by a Patreon member, and there are some other member requested videos in the pipeline, so stay tuned. I think this one will make it to the main channel probably sooner rather than later, so for now let's keep it between us here in the Patreon, but if you are currently watching this on the main YouTube channel, welcome to the party! And don't forget to like and subscribe as it's the best way to support the Small Peptide YouTube channel. And as this subscriber who requested the video indicated, PNC27 is pretty hyped up. It's supposedly able to help treat like all types of cancers. And it's pretty interesting because researchers sought to evaluate how it works and perform tests to see if it works the way they propose. Now let's try to assess whether this is fact or whether it's fiction. And a good way to start off the conversation is by taking a look at how PNC27 is purported to work. So researchers involved in this discovery say that it binds a protein called HDM2 that's expressed in cancer cell membranes of solid tumor tissue and as a result induces structural changes only in cancer cells resulting in their necrosis. So to recap, the idea is that PNC27 causes cancer cells to selectively die. Now that's a bold move, Cotton. So let's backtrack a bit. There are different genes whose expression is notable to be either procancerous, acting as an oncogene, or their opposite as a tumor suppression gene. One notable tumor suppressor protein is called P53, and something that is popularly discussed is the relationship between expression of this particular protein protein P53 in cancer. And as a tumor suppressor, when P53 is impaired or mutated, these individuals are significantly more prone to development of different cancers. And the TP53 gene itself is the most commonly mutated gene in human cancers. Now this is relevant because HDM2, which we touched on earlier, is a protein ligase that suppresses transcriptional activity of P53. So by suppressing formation of this tumor suppressing product, we can say that HDM2 is is procancerous. Okay, are you still there? I'm aware that this is an intricate one, but in a nutshell, P53 is a cancer suppressor. HDM2 is a cancer promoter via decreasing expression of the suppressor P53. So what this peptide, PNC27, is attempting to do is to regulate this process through binding HDM2. And just as a pro tip, if you're looking into this yourself, you'll see that HDM2 is oftentimes also called MDM2. It's the same thing. Now, P PNC27 is constructed in a way to include the amino acids that sit on the binding domain between P53 and HDM2, attached to a transmembrane penetrating sequence. You'll see that researchers also experimented with a peptide called PNC28 that's very similar to PNC27 but lacks the first six amino acids. And although its creation obviously was based off the relationship between P53 and HDM2, researchers say that its actions are independent of this tumor suppressor. And the visualized means of cellular death wasn't through apoptosis or programmed deletion, but instead via formation of a transmembrane pore inducing necrosis, which is a less organized and less cellularly intrinsic process. And therein lies how it got what is essentially a catchphrase and that it kills cancer but not normal cells. So now we're going to assess what the actual clinical research shows and evaluate why the FDA in 2017 put out a big old warning against the peptide. And so we've got to consider that the peptide does indeed not have any human clinical research, but we can evaluate what it's done in cancer lines and data of that sort. A piece published in 2015 where two isolated epithelial ovarian cancer cell lines were obtained from patients demonstrated susceptibility to the peptide. It was also shown in a leukemia model with the human chronic myeloid K562 leukemia cell line that PNC27 was selectively cytotoxic to these cancer cells, which was thought to be due to the expression of HDM2 on the cancer cell membranes. And this correlated with findings of lactate dehydrogenase or LDH release, which would indicate their necrosis. So essentially LDH was used as a marker for cell death 
and they saw that its presence correlated positively with administration of the peptide and the death of these cancer cells. Another study showed similarly through binding to HDM2 that PNC27 induces death to the AML blast cells or the progenitor cells involved in acute myeloid leukemia that express HDM2 in vitro. Other in vitro research or research that takes place outside of the organism like in a cell culture showed that PNC27 may be synergistic with a chemotherapeutic drug called paclitaxel. Via this drug's ability to increase expression of MDM2 or HDM2, thus allowing these cells to be more susceptible to PNC2 so that it could get to work. So pretty much in combination, paclitaxel freed up the binding site that PNC27 would bind to and induce cellular necrosis. So by this point, we've gone through much of what has been done. Of course, not every detail, but we've gone through how the peptides theorized to work and the extent to which it's been researched in different cancer cell lines. So not everything in the world, but enough relevant to a hopefully informative YouTube video. Now the FDA threw out a warning that cancer patients should not use the peptide because in two different samples, different bacteria were found, both in samples intended for inhalation of the product. And these sort of findings are of course adequate concerns in the world of experimental peptide use, and these fears for administration of unknowns and impurities are likely at the underpinning of the FDA's ban on peptide compounding this past fall. But PNC27 is not FDA approved, and an abstract which was published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology discusses a patient with metastatic cervical cancer who sought additional options and chose to go to Mexico to receive PNC27 infusions. And this patient subsequently developed gastrointestinal hemorrhage and ultimately, unfortunately, passed. Causation to use of the peptide has not been directly drawn, but it's something to consider and certainly a unique case report as no human clinical data evaluates use of the peptide itself. So all I can say at this point is that it's interesting, and the idea that a compound could selectively target a binding domain present on cancer cells to induce their necrosis would be scientifically life-changing. And don't get me wrong, there could very well be some promise with this one, but the research, although intriguing and possibly earth-shattering, isn't there yet. There's a lot we don't know. With regards to human data, safety profile, long-term risk, pharmacokinetics, and even the benefit, there's very little to hang our hat on. And although I think the hype is adequate to an extent, the data hasn't proven that this is the end of cancer. Do I think and hope that it'll be further evaluated in the future? Sure. But is there more to be looked at for it to be deemed both safe and effective? Also sure. So this is an overview that I could extrapolate based off the research that's available to us at this point, all of which is linked in the description below. If you haven't already and you're looking for a way to further support the channel, feel free to take a look at the Patreon page. Some of the videos have samples, but I shoot for one video a week and members get special requests to make videos or look into research that they want us to. And and if you haven't already, like and subscribe to that main YouTube channel. I appreciate all of you as always, and I hope that you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.